Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Science Fiction Prototyping Podcast. I'm Brian David Johnson. This week finds me in Portland, Oregon. I am home this week. I had a pretty heavy travel schedule these last few weeks, but uh, this week I'm home in Portland and very happy to be home. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous spring day. The, the trees are all green and the flowers are out and the sun is shining. Just one of those really, really wonderful, wonderful days in Portland. Over the last week, I've been traveling quite a bit and doing science fiction prototyping work. Last week, I was down in Burbank, California. I was visiting with a company called Wet Design. Wet is a company that designs fountains. Um, their, one of their most famous fountains was the, um, the fountains at the Bellagio. Um, the sort of massive scale, and they do this this sort of design, and they, they do it all over the world. I was very fortunate to meet their um, the owner who who runs the company. His name's Mark Mark Fuller, and Mark wanted me to come down and and work with his crew to think about science fiction. How could we use again this idea of science fiction based on science fact? But to be very specific, we made physical science fiction, where oftentimes we will do science fiction prototypes around, say, science fiction stories or comic books or even movies, whereas we were really specifically focusing with Mark's team, the team at WET, on physical science fiction. How could we come up with artifacts from the future so that you could come up with a story, think about technology, think about the human impact, come up with a a storyline but then go back and pick one object, one artifact, if you will, from that story and actually then build that artifact and put it into somebody's hand so that they would literally feel like they were holding the future in their hand. It was an amazing couple of days. The The crew there was completely into it. They got it. They threw themselves into it. And uh, if you've never seen or seen a profile of wet design, it is just an amazing place. It seems like they own, I think, like half of Burbank. It's just huge. And and Mark has kitted out the workshop with with everything you would need from CNC uh, cutters to um, massive lathes. They have a bio lab. They have certainly have 3D printers. They just have everything you could possibly need to make stuff. Um, and that's what we did, is we, we used science fiction prototyping to, to think about possible futures, and then these, these amazing teams went off and, and made things. And so I think we're going to be having some, uh, some report outs from that really, really soon. We're talking about possibly putting together a book or using them in other places. So I think uh, stay tuned for that. There will be some more things. Well, this week on, on the podcast, what I wanted to talk about was secret science fiction. So in the May issue of the IEEE Computer Magazine, the science fiction prototyping column is about secret science fiction, the science fiction you will never be allowed to read. This is the the types of things that I do at Intel, but lots of people have been doing where they're using science fiction prototypes to think about the darker side of technology or the darker side of the, the things that we are building. And these science fiction prototypes sometimes written by very famous people, sometimes written by amateurs, but these pieces of science fiction become confidential. They become a part of the intellectual property. And so even though these great stories are being told and and they're really exploring some, some very dark issues and dark themes, you'll never be able to read them simply because they need to remain confidential. And so that's what we wrote about in the column, is looking at some some different examples. But what I wanted to do today as as an add-on to the column is I I did a real small interview with a gentleman by the name of Ari Popper. And I wanted to bring Ari um, into the podcast so we could have a little bit of a longer conversation. The work that that Ari's doing is really fascinating. He really is using science fiction and using science fiction prototyping and using it for industry. He uh, uses science fiction for his clients to imagine possible futures, imagine innovations, and really transform their companies. So I sat down with Ari, uh, called him on the phone, and we just had a longer conversation about kind of his inspiration and and what he saw and and really what the the power that he sees in science fiction prototyping. So let's have a listen to, to that interview, and then I'll be back. So, Ari Popper, welcome to the Science Fiction Prototyping Podcast. Hello, Brian. It's great to be here. So, 
Ari, you and I are, are uh, we've talked in the past about using science fiction to um, think about the human impact, think about the cultural impact of these technology, and really using science fiction as an engine for innovation. And so the, the work that you're doing at Sci Futures really, really does that. Um, where, does the, where did the idea come from? How did it all start? Yeah, well, well it came, my background is in consulting and, and market research and consumer insights, um, but actually it came in a creative writing course at UCLA. I was doing science fiction writing, and fantastic course um, offered by my partner, now Professor Mike Buckley. And after doing this course, I was a few weeks in, I just realized that the act of writing science fiction stories is such a powerful creative device because it forces you to really think about the entire context, the language, the whole construct of what you're trying to achieve. And the more I started to write these stories and the more I thought about the process, the stronger the link um, came for me in terms of using this as a way to help companies um, create really disruptive innovation. Um, and it was, like, it was like an itch that I couldn't stop scratching until, uh, until eventually I had to... To really scratch it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and, and you had mentioned to me that there's this 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 visceral moment when you're writing these sorts of projects where you actually see it. It, it become you you can feel it. You uh, we we were joking that you can you can taste it. You can smell it. You can the that future that you're talking about for some reason when you put it into a. Um, when you put it into a story, it becomes so much more real and it becomes so much more visceral. What, what sorts of, of things have you found that, that using science fiction and using science fiction prototyping, what, what is it really good at? What, what have you seen that it's really good at? Yeah, well, well exactly what you described. It, it's very, I mean, you know, the, the great thrill that I get and, and I think um, a lot of people get who love science fiction as a genre is that it allows you to experience something that's quite fantastic but could feel almost likely like it could happen and very, very probable. Um, and that, that joy is a, is a visceral joy. And you get that joy when the author is able to really um, pull you into the story and so that you can really relate to the characters and, and the environment. And so um, what it's really good at, if it's done well, is it allows our clients to take some things that are very abstract and complex, like, for example, understanding the future and, and uh, the trends and emerging technologies that are disrupting our clients' businesses. That's very complex, heady stuff. But when you put it into uh, you know, great narratives, as you say, buying great stories, um, all of a sudden a different part of your of the, of our human of our humanity engages with the content. We get drawn in. We can relate to the story. We can relate to the characters, and it becomes a very powerful communication device. So, so we like to say, Brian, we, we you know we make we make the geek speak um, because I think futurists and I think uh, uh, people who are involved in technology and and um, innovators they're quite good at um, describing the trends and describing. The technologies that are that are disrupting the world, but where they sometimes fall short is making it or translating it into into a form that is really um, emotionally engaging, and that of course is what science fiction does, right? Right. Oh, definitely. And I think that visceral feeling, that capturing the imagination, that making it real, and using that as a as as a tool. You know, for whether it be technology development or for for business, I think is is really starting to really starting to, to to catch on, and and people are beginning to see what's what's possible with that. So, when you do this process, when when you sit down with your clients and you you know you have a session or you show them these things, what what has been their reaction? What what, what have you found that they have found to be most valuable? Yeah, no, that's, that's a, it's a great question. I think, to be fair, um, as a concept or as a construct of using science fiction as prototyping, it, it does, depending on the client, it, it, it does have a barrier initially. People say, well, you know, stories, 
for innovation or science fiction stories for innovation. But once once we get them over that barrier uh, and they're involved in the process of creating these narratives or um, uh, or engaging with narratives that science fiction writers have, have written for them, something happens on there's this transformation away from what people think um, should be possible to, to what could be possible. And when people, when our clients have, the, have that permission to really to let go and dream, um, amazing things happen, amazing ideas come up. And, that, and that's really the power of the approach, is it, is it just provides you a way to kind of disrupt your thinking today and really inspire um, our clients where, where they could go. That, that's the most exciting part, I think. So I have to ask you, you've been doing all this work and you've had some some really amazing clients and of course this month's science fiction prototyping column article is all about secret science fiction, um, the science fiction that you'll never get to read. What what is your your favorite science fiction story that you've done for your your clients and and when will we get to read it? You know, it's such a great article that you're writing because it's true. Um, because this work is so disruptive and um, provocative and, and powerful, frankly, um, we can't really talk about it. But there, one of our favorites is, is one that um, we're working on right now. Um, it's, it's set in the kind of home improvement space. Um, and it's it's extraordinary um, story, really disruptive. But what's beautiful about it, as, as Warren Ellis says, um, you know, we're living the science fiction condition, so the story that we dreamt up um, could actually be created today. So that's my favorite. Um, when it's going to be available, I would imagine in the next two to three months uh, we'll be able to publish it and uh, talk about the work that we're doing. But, but yeah, that's that's one of the favorite. But, but it's an unfair question, Warren, you know, it's like, you ask me to choose my uh, which which of my children I love the most, right? <laughs> I'm just I'm impressed that you're going to actually even be able to release it. Yeah, there's so many so many stories I know that you work on, and there's so many stories that that I work on, and 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 other folks that we know that, of course, will never see the light of day. That they simply by design they can't because, as you said, these are so provocative, they are so innovative that really they become a part of the the company's intellectual property, um, and that's a good thing, right? That's a good thing. For companies to be using this as a tool, I think it's it's tantalizing and sometimes sad to say that there's these great science fiction stories out there written by incredibly talented people that get into really amazing ideas, but will never be allowed to to read them. But I think ultimately that secret science fiction is something that's good. I think because it really does get people thinking in ways they wouldn't normally um, they wouldn't normally think. But all right, I want, I want to thank you so much. Thank you for sitting down t- um, and chatting with me today. Thank you for being a, a part of the uh, the article as well. But most importantly, thank you so much for Sci Futures. I think the work that you're doing is is really great, and I can't wait until I at least get to see maybe one or two of the stories sometime in the future. Uh, thank you, and huge thanks to you too. You're, you're, we're standing on the shoulder of giants, and, and you're, you're one of them. So, so thank you, Brian. So that was my conversation with Ari Popper from Psy Futures. Ari, uh, he kind of surprised me there at the end. When we were originally uh, meeting, we were having breakfast at the uh, Intercontinental Hotel in San Francisco. We were, we were chatting, and I had put that question to him to say, when would we get to read some of the science fiction that he's been working on? And he kind of slyly smiled and said, well, probably never, because that's, uh, that's kind of the nature of what he does. So I'm, I was uh, surprised when he said that we actually might might be able to catch a glimpse of some of the, the work that he's doing. So certainly if that gets released, if uh, the Psy Futures work gets released, uh, I will link to it and uh, we'll probably even do maybe another podcast about it. So I think that's really exciting. So I want to thank you all for joining me today for the uh, Science Fiction Prototyping Podcast. Uh, If you have any ideas for uh, future columns or podcasts, or if you even have a science fiction prototype that you'd want to publish and get in front of people, please do not hesitate to get in touch with me. Uh, You can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Intel Futurist. Or you can always email me at brian.david.johnson at intel.com. And keep an ear out for some more uh, science fiction prototyping podcasts. They'll be coming every couple of weeks. Thanks. See you soon.